My name is Muta Bill, formerly known as Napoleon. Uh, most people might know me as a rap artist or a former rap artist that was involved with a rap group called The Outlaws. Alhamdulillah, about 18 years ago, myself also converted to the religion of Islam. Mutawasin Sabas Peale juga dikenal sebagai Napoleon. Sebenarnya lahir di tengah keluarga Muslim. Sang ayah merupakan Amerika Afrika Muslim bernama Salik Peale. Ibunya Kilai Peale merupakan Muslim asal Puerto Rico. Namun keduanya meninggal saat Mutah baru berusia tiga tahun. Mutah dan seorang adiknya menyaksikan kematian orang tua mereka yang ditembak mati kelompok garis keras Nation of Islam. Mutah pun seketika menjadi yatim piatu yang kemudian dibesarkan oleh sang nenek dalam lingkungan Nasrani. Gagal memahami perbedaan antara agama Islam dan Nation of Islam, Mutah tumbuh dengan membenci apapun yang berhubungan dengan Islam. Meskipun dua pamannya beragama Islam, dia tidak tahu banyak tentang iman. Grew up in environment when I see many of the people around me, my cousins, my brothers, they got involved in activities in the streets such as selling drugs. But at a very young age, I wanted to do something different. I realized that me going down the path of a drug dealer, it wasn't really good for me. So I wanted to do something different. So what I started to do is write raps, or what you can call poetry. I would go in my room, I would write a rap, and I would come back outside in my neighborhood. And I would say this rap for those, the locals in my neighborhood, the local drug dealers, the local gangsters. I would say a rap for them, and I remember they used to pay me. They used to say, I give you a dollar if you say a rap. I give you 50 cents if you say a rap. So I realized that maybe rap music can be a career for me. Bersama keluarga besar, Mutah hidup dalam kemiskinan. Tak adanya pendidikan yang memadai membuat Mutah menjadi pemuda liar. Ia bahkan pernah menghisap narkoba dan sempat ditangkap aparat. Hingga kemudian, Mutah ingin mengubah nasibnya karena merasa iba dengan sang nenek yang mengurus banyak cucu. Ia pun mengejar karirnya menjadi penyanyi rap. Bermula menjadi rapper jalanan selama bertahun-tahun, Mutah kemudian dipertemukan dengan Tupac Shakur. So eventually Tupac put a rap group together. He wanted to call us the Young Thugs. And then we went to Drama Cidal. And eventually we went to call the Outlaws. I appeared on the first record that I appeared on was a record called Me Against the World with Tupac that sold to this day 5 million records. The next album was an album called All Eyes On Me. Um, that record sold 20 million records. I appeared on over 40 million record sales worldwide. And I used to see rappers with their jewelry on, their cars, their chain, their houses. I used to say to myself, I want that lifestyle because they seem happy. But when I got involved in the music industry, I realized that it was a facade. It wasn't, it was a mirage, as they say in the Arab world. It wasn't the truth. It wasn't what it seemed to be. Hidup glamor di dunia hiburan pun menjadi rutinitas mutah. Inilah cita-citanya sejak merintis karir di jalanan. Ia pun tak lagi diliputi kemiskinan dan dapat memberikan hidup layak bagi sang nenek. Namun, mutah justru tak merasa bahagia. Hingga suatu hari, sang nenek yang mengurusnya meninggal dunia. Mutah diliputi kesedihan yang sangat. Tak lama kemudian, tupak yang menangui grup rapnya pun meninggal dunia dengan tragis. Makin berlipat gandalah kesedihan mutah. And it was a domino effect. Because after the death of Tupac, Suge Knight, the CEO of Death Row Records, who also got shot in the car, he went to prison for five years. We pretty much, myself, along with the outlaws, we had to fend on ourselves. We had to, we had to survive on our own. My life was turned upside down in a matter of seconds, in the blinking of an eye, and I realized I had to survive for myself. So I continued to do music, but it was never the same after losing Tupac and losing Gaddafi. I continued to do music myself, And my group members, the Outlaws, we released an album called Still I Rise. That record sold over two, three million records. And now I started to see a little bit of money for myself. The more that I kept moving into these homes, I, f I realized that something was missing. It wasn't the house that I was living in. It wasn't the size of the home. It wasn't the amount of bedrooms in the house. I realized that it was something inside of me that was missing, but I couldn't put my hands on it. And I would say to myself, I have this, I have this house. I have money in my bank account. I have a brand new car in my I have brand new cars, I have jewelry. But the only thing I don't have is happiness. Pada tahun 2002, Mutah mabuk di studio rekaman dan bertengkar dengan adik laki-lakinya. Seorang muslim di studio menghentikan perkelahiannya. The guy Macau, the brother Macau, he called me and he said, "I have to send you the bill to pay." 
I said, how much is going to cost? He said, I don't want you to pay me money. He said, I want you to visit the mosque. I said, wait a minute, that sounds strange. You don't want me to pay you money? You want me to go to the masjid? He said, yeah, that's all I want from you. So I said, okay, no problem. After he kept calling me and calling me, I eventually accepted his invitation. Remind you, the people that murdered my mother and father when I was three years old, they claimed to be Muslim. So my entire life I grew up with a negative mindset and thinking about Muslims. From my ignorance, I didn't want to be around a Muslim. I didn't really trust Muslims. So now this guy is asking me to come to the mosque. But I have no other choice because I have to pay him. So I remember calling my friends. I took a loaded gun. You know, I took a gun, I put it in my waist. I called my friends. We went up there about 20, about 20 of us. And I walked into the mass shit. To the mass shit, it was a predominantly black American mass shit, African American mass shit. But I noticed I seen white Americans. I seen Arab Americans, Pakistanis Americans. And everybody was hugging each other. Everybody was joking and laughing with each other. So this was a brotherhood that I seen that cross skin color, race, it didn't matter. They all was one body. Time I enter a place of worship and I seen people from all different color, all shades, all race, different languages, but they all treated each other like brothers. And prayer time came and this brother told me to pray. I told him I don't know how to pray. I told him I never prayed in my life. And I remember his words. He said, pray with us. Whatever you see us do, you do. But when you put your face in the floor, remember that you're only worshiping your creator. So whatever you want, you ask your creator. And I remember when I put my face down to the floor, this particular time in my life, I didn't want money. I didn't want anything from dunya. Only thing I wanted was happiness and tranquility. That's, I would have gave my money up to be happy. So when prayer time came, I remember putting my face down to the floor and I remember praying to God. I said, oh God, can you please guide me to a way of life that will bring my happiness? Guide me to a way of life that will bring my happiness. Itulah awal mutah mengenal Islam. Ia pun kemudian mempelajari Islam dengan rasa penasaran yang sangat. Mutah pun kemudian bersyahadat. Tak tanggung-tanggung, ia ingin menjadi Muslim sejati. Tak hanya perkara wajib yang ia taati, Sunnah Rasulullah pun ia jalani. Sekitar lima bulan kemudian Mutah menjalani ibadah haji. Mutah begitu semangat berislam. Sejak mengenal Islam, ia mendapati ketenangan hidup yang selama ini ia inginkan.